Hey folks, it's Steve Womet. Let's learn how to play We Three Kings. Let's say you don't have one of these. That's okay. Pretend that the nut on this guitar is the fifth fret of your guitar. So, in We Three Kings, I was wrong on the last video. The original was tuned uh, as if it was on the fifth fret, so it was in A um, standard tuning, not G. There are a multitude of parts. I'll go over this part really quickly because I think the electric parts are maybe more of what you're interested in. But Here's what happened. When I did bow this guitar, I had 10 different tracks that I did uh, for every chord. So what I would do is I would open tune everything to a single note. Um, so if the first chord was a B minor, I just tuned every note to a B on the, uh, on the papoose. Uh, and that gave me multiple octaves of that same note. And I would just bow 10 tracks of that to get the chord. And then I would retune for the next chord, or maybe I uh, uh, put a capo on, or just fingered the, um, you know, put a bar chord down and, and played that particular chord. So that was that. That's the drone in the beginning. Uh, the first part is, you'll notice this. 
This is just the beginning of the song where I'm playing power chords, and there aren't that many. The song is B minor, A, D, E minor, F sharp, 7, and then back to B. So when you play this, that goes all the way through until it gets to the progression. opened up as I started to bring in the drums and uh, the guitar. That's the second section. So you've got the bows, then you've got that. There's a counterpart, uh, counterpoint section that um, sort of sets up the rhythm, and it goes like this. going until we get to the uh, main part. Um, the next part is another counterpart to the melody, which we haven't gotten to yet. So part four was... Finally, we have the melody, which is all just in the key of B minor, right in the, um, the standard uh, five notes of the scale. But I bent into some of the notes. And then I do it an octave higher. So that is the entire papoose section. Okay, let's move on to the next. The rhythm guitars. This is um, this is a pretty simple song to play rhythmically. So what I did was um, this is the strat that's used uh, for the entire recording, at least this time around, and I dropped the tuning. So this is standard tuning with a drop D, because you're going to be playing a lot of power chords. Okay, the intro comes in with the build, which is uh, you start hearing everything building with the bass and the drums, and then the melody comes in, and this is what is played underneath that. So that is the entire section up until the papooses come in again. And it's really simple. We're, we're talking about a B minor, well, it's just a B5, B power chord. Going back and forth. And then when we get to the build, so I'll play that all with one finger so that you can see the frets. comes the Star of Wonder part. And all that is is just an open with a couple of chug, and then open on the fifth string and fifth fret of the fifth string. Um, And 
then we have the the build, which is um, or the descending run, I should call it, which is just literally a chromatic run. I'll do it with one finger so that you can see. It starts on the 12th fret. <laughs> down in groups of three. Actually what it does, I should make a, a clear a clarification there, and when it gets down to here, slightly different on those last ones and that's the entire part and now you've played all of the rhythm parts for the song the only thing that happens is it comes back around um, to the um that again and then we have a double dissension which is first the the standard chromatic back to the other one. And then we have the ending. Couldn't be easier. All right, let's get on to the main lead section. There are two parts. It's a harmony. So uh, the beginning part is just uh, when the build starts to happen, you get this. Kind of goes in a loop. That's that section. And then you get a super build, which is just a B minor. Again, this is all in B minor. So it's a B minor scale that is doing uh, sort of a pattern. Okay, there's that. And then I kick off the octave pedal, which was on, and you just get. And then we go into the melody, which brings the harmony back or the uh, octave divider back on. And when I say octave divider, I keep messing that up. I mean the Hartman octave fuzz. Those are all pretty simple. You can see that it's up on the uh, 15th to the 18th fret. And then I do the same bends as I did earlier with the papoose. That's that section. And then we have the Star of Wonder part. Pretty simple. The octave goes off again, and we do some speed picking. go back into the uh, breakdown. And then we have the little swirling part, which is, again, it's higher, and the uh, harmony part is going to be doing something similar. And then we just follow the melody from there. And that note 
stops right when the goes in. So when we come back after the solo, we do the Star of Wonder part again. <laughs> And then and the last note you're ending on the 19th fret and then I put that diminished fifth in there That keeps going till the final chord. And that's uh, definitely got the octave um, fuzz on it. And that's the main part. This part is full of all sorts of fun. So this is the harmony and sort of auxiliary track. Mm -hmm. And so when you get the big, uh, the big lick that goes into the melody, the next thing that happens is the harmony along with the lead line. <laughs> So it's basically just a string up and slightly different. We're on the uh, 18th fret. And on this guitar, that's the 21st fret. Well, any guitar would be the 21st fret, but that's the last fret. And after you get done with that, you need your Ebo. So what goes on underneath that uh, next line is the Ebo goes on and we play, we play um, arpeggios. So basically all it is is a chord progression where I'm holding down, um, let me make that a little clean, a B minor, an A major, a D major, a B minor twice, and then an F sharp seven, and then it's out. So when you're using the Ebo, this is what you get. Kind of cool. Um, what's happening here is the, the magnets in this are, are actually exciting the strings to play these, these notes individually. So there's a couple of, what you normally do with this is you place it between two strings. And it'll sustain forever. But what I'm doing is I'm just laying it across the strings. And it makes a really cool kind of violinish um, arpeggio. <laughs> That's that part. Okay, the next part we get to is uh, the Star of Wonder part. And again, this is underneath the main melody, the underneath the main melody, which is. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing an arpeggio that's just two strings. So we have seventh fret, second string. 5th fret, 1st string, 10th fret, 1st string. And there's just two arpeggios. And then this one. So you have... And that's all that is, and I'm muting it.
and that plays back and forth over the melody. And then we do get into another one. So that's the, uh, the build there, so you have... Gotta step on the Hartman again. That's uh, just bending it into the notes again if we're doing sort of like a, a bunch of. Does that make sense? Then we go into the breakdown section again with the papoose, with the bowing, and the middle section. Uh, the next thing that happens is we had on the other part... Well, this one is an octave lower. And it's basically just the same thing, an octave lower. goes up a third, just straight up a third. We kick off the octave again, and from there... That's how you get into the rhythm part for the solo. Okay. In the last section, where I'm doing the Star of Wonder on the main, that is doing a straight D major running scale up and down. Then, for the dissension, the first dissension... And then we have the final dissension. just keeps holding until the final chord. And that's that part. So we have... And then open D, open A, and then the ascension. Okay, so here's the solo. The solo is an improv. So what I did in this, it's not exact, but I can show you the exact areas that I played everything and you can kind of make up your own version. But it's it's pretty close. What I did is I started out, I've got the, um, the Hartman octave fuzz on and I do a nice little... So all that is is the third string I'm kind of and then sliding into the um, F sharp on the first string. And then I do a run. And then I do another run. And 
and then I do an arpeggio. <laughs> Kick on it again. So we do a little blues run. And then another line here, which is again B minor. And that's really the whole solo. So you're playing in B minor, it's improvised with uh, specific sections as you can see. And again, to get a better idea of it, you can just kind of follow along with the, with the, the full playthrough and you'll see what's going on. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, the key factor is having that Hartman octave up fuzz and you're switching it on and off. Those sound a lot stronger when you're on the neck pickup rather than the bridge. If you hear this, versus this. You'll really hear the octave up there. So it's more pronounced that way. And uh, I am not able to get the exact same tone that I had before. And it's because I'm not using uh, a speaker cabinet. I'm using uh, the universal aux and it reacts slightly differently with the pedal than it might be in a room with the speaker cabinet because the pickups are going to interact with the speaker and it does different things. But, you know, the effect is, is pretty much the same. You're just probably getting a little bit more pronounced um, octave up. And that's pretty much the solo. So there you go. And that is pretty much it. So I believe that is a, about as exhaustive of a version as I can put together. I think that uh, answers all the questions. But if you have them, as always, go ahead and leave comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. And I'll be back with more videos in the very near future. Have a great week.